Well, get there, guys. So we're out here doing another little survival challenge this weekend. Oh, we're going. Phew! There we go. I've got no food, no water, and just a bare minimal gear. And we're going to be out here for the next three days, trying to yeah, survive and live off the, the land and the sea. Well, here we've got one of my favourite bush tucker plants. It's meant to be uh, offshore wind all weekend, sunny blue skies. So, really looking forward to it. All right, so I think the first course of action is we might try and find some fresh water because as everyone knows, you're going to be a few weeks without food, but only a few days without water. And especially when it's uh, hot and sunny like this, we're going to start dehydrating pretty quickly, I reckon. What well, we might be on here, there's this little uh, stream coming out of the, the sand dunes and the scrub. So we might go follow that up and see if we can find a nice little pool of fresh water. It hasn't rained the last few weeks, so I'm pretty hopeful. Might just give it a quick little taste. That tastes pretty good, eh? We go for a bit more of a wander up there and see if we can find anything a little bit fresh in a, a bigger pool. And also, first bit of bush tucker for the trip. Okay, let's get some warrigal greens or bush spinach. And it's just edible raw. Well, they do say um, you should blanch it because it does have oxalates in it. So you should um, yeah, blanch it to sort of leach out the oxalates, but you can eat them raw, just not in huge quantities. Well, I did not expect this. I thought it was just going to be like a little swamp up here, but it's actually like a little lake, eh? Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do to filter it, is I've got this bandana. What I'll do, is I'll put the bandana over my bottle. I've got my nesting cup, or billy. I'll fill that up with the water, and then pour that through the bandana, so that way the bandana collects all the sediment. And then um, I'll boil this water later. Well, she's definitely tannin rich. It's got a deep amber color to it, but there's no bugs or sediment. So once I boil this up later, should be good to drink. Yeah, honestly, I really did not expect uh, finding fresh water to be this easy. Eh? This goes to show all that rain we've had in the last few weeks is uh, yeah, definitely making my life a little bit easier this weekend. All right, let's make a move. So here we got small bush tucker. So this is a ruby salt bush plant. The leaves are edible. They have like a slightly salty taste to them. They're quite fleshy. And also, they do get edible red berries, but they're not in fruit just yet. Probably another month or so, and um, yeah, all this will be a uh, little red berries that you can eat. But they're quite bitter, um, so you sort of eat them in small amounts. But yeah, the leaves are edible as well. So this is some more of that warrigal greens so or bush spinach. As you can see, the leaves get quite large. So yeah, it's a really handy bush tucker plant. This one actually helped uh, Captain Cook's backside out when he came to Australia because um, a lot of the sailors had scurvy, so they used this to. They try and help him out. Alright, let's go through my gear. So I've got the bandana. I've got a new canvas swag from Remote Projects, which I'll show you guys later. I've got my Garmin. GPS, which has uh, got SOS function in case I need it, which hopefully I don't. Got my first aid kit, which has like a snake bandage, or there's two snake bandages in there, and some other first aid. Some sunscreen, because we're coming out of winter and I'm very white. <laughs> got a prawn net in here. Got some dive gloves. Got a dive knife. I've got some fishing line on a hand reel, and a little tin with some hooks and some sinkers. Got a one litre stainless steel water bottle and a nesting cup. Got a ferro rod attached to the bag. Got my keys, just uh, four metres of paracord. Got a big plastic bag, which I can use to either collect water or there might be an estuary crossing. So I might need to put my bag inside this, um, this plastic bag. Got the zip off portion to the lower portion to my pants. Got a flannel shirt. Got some board shorts. Got a dive mask and a snorkel. Got a, all my camera goodies. That's like my chargers, my GoPros, my power banks, um, all the attachments to the GoPro is all in there. So that takes up quite a lot of room. Got a 
the say the summit sleeping mat and a sleeping quilt which is uh, by Nev Gear. And that is it. In my pockets I've just got some sunnies and my phone. I just saw a seal down here. He's ducked under. Oh, actually, I think he's over there now. The other side of the rocks. Yep, there he is. So we've got some more tucker here. So this is Neptune's necklace, which is edible. And then we've got some sea lettuce over here, which is also edible. And just with the sea lettuce, you just want to hold the base and then pick the lettuce away, so that way you keep the roots. And then with the, uh, the Neptune's necklace, you see these little, little bubbles? They're full of our uh, seawater, so you just want to pop them with your teeth. Just get the seawater out, and then you can eat the flesh. All right, well now we've got water sorted. It's about time we have focused on some food. And I'm thinking this uh, rock shelf just here might be a good place to fish. It drops off really deep. There's also some good rocks over here that can probably um, stand on and fish off there. So we're going to try and find some bait first. Um, so I'll scout around the rock, see if I can find any like crabs or maybe some limpets or mussels or something like that. We'll hook that up and yeah, we'll chuck it out there. I'm hoping I can try and yeah, maybe get myself a, a brim or something. All right, so I'm just going to run a running sinker just straight to a hook. Now I am a massive newbie when it comes to bait fishing. This is what the guy in the tackle shop told me to do, so this is what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to try and see if I can get a, a crab. There's one. Ah, there we go. There we go. First crab. Well, there's plenty of kanji around here, so maybe I'll take some of this as well. There you go, that should get us started. All right, there we go. But uh, this is like pretty much the first time I've ever bait fished really for brim, so see how we go. Oh wow, some Aussie salmon down there. Oh yes, 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 we're on. Oh, oh, damn it, we're off. Ah, spewing. I'm so not fussy either. What kind of fish I get? As long as it's legal, I do not care. Oh, we're going. Phew! There we go. We finally got one. <laughs> it's not the biggest fish in the world. To be honest, I don't even know what kind of fish he is. I think he's like a, a rock kale or something. I think I've got another one. Yep, I think I've got one. There's uh, the lines all tangled in the weed. Oh. <laughs> oh, another little rock kale. <laughs> You're joking. Well, there's dinner for tonight. Two very average fish, but hey, it's food and I'm stoked. All right, well, now that we've got our awesome catch, I think it's about time we uh, make a move on and try and find a camp. Probably only get about so about two and a half hours till it gets dark, so yeah, let's get a move on. We've got some uh, water dripping down this rock face here, so another good way to collect water is by using those big plastic bags that I bought and just place them underneath those drips. That way it's got like a larger surface area to collect all the drips and I don't know, after a few hours you probably have a, I don't know, probably about a litre I reckon. Maybe yeah, do that tomorrow if I need to. How's that? Looks like someone made themselves a little gunya. Not very waterproof, but uh, not a bad view. 
All right, well, I think this might be camp for tonight. Got a nice query just here. There's also no widow makers above me either. And I've just set myself back from the cliff line, like a decent distance. That way you're sort of not trampling on any vegetation close to the cliff. Yeah, this will do. Let's uh, roll out swag. Okay, so this week I'm just testing out the new swag from Remote Projects. Really like it. It's a nice lightweight swag. It doesn't come with a mattress, so you just um, supply your own mattress, whether it, you get some foam cut out for it or you just use an inflatable mat. But it's got these, well first off, the style of the swag is a traditional envelope style. And it's got these two big zips running down each side. There's another zip down that side as well. So nice and easy to get in and out of and just super simple. Like it doesn't have any bug mesh and that's, I actually kind of like it that way because if the swag is going to fail, it's going to be because um, you get a hole in the, the mosquito mesh. So by doing it this way, this will honestly last your like bloody lifetime if you look after it. And then you can just pair it with uh, like, a, like an external bug net like Alton, make a box bug net. You could easily just put that over the top of it and that way you've got a yeah, winning combo. So that's what I'm going to do in the future. I'm just going to bring out my um, yeah, Alton bug net. Just put that over the top and then yeah, Bob's your uncle. So pretty keen to see how it goes tonight. Like I said, I'm just testing it out for this weekend. Um, but yeah, looking forward to spending the night in it. And it's also got these uh, three grommets at the front so you can yeah, tie that up to a tree or to a stick or something. That way you can keep the flap off your face and you, you get a nice view to wake up to. Or if it's raining, you just pop that down and yeah, that'll keep you nice and protected. Dead leaves from the spiny headed mat rush are really good to use for tinder to get the fire started. As well as the mat rush being a good bush tucker plant, you just pull out one of the uh, inner leaves, get all that white section, that's all edible. Just tastes like green peas, really nice. Just want to rough this up and just try and expose as many of those fibers as you can. What a nice spot to take in the afternoon. This is beautiful, just like the rich deep turquoise blue in the water and fairy forest skies. Right now it's a good thing to note because there's a slight sea breeze coming off the ocean. I've just cleared the leaf litter for a two meter circumference around the fire so that way I'm playing extra safe and there's no chance of the yeah, fire escaping into the leaf litter. Well, I was a little bit too impatient to wait for a decent bed of coals, so I've just chucked the fish down on what's there. I'll try and build up some more coals next to it, but uh, well, I think it should still cook. Well, it definitely does look like the most appetizing fish in the world, but it's food, so it will do. Smells a little bit how <laughs> you going as well. Got to keep an eye on that fire, the wind's picking up a little bit. I've got a big pile of sand, uh, soil just here, so I can chuck that on top if I need to. Right, I might put some on. That's why it's always good to have um, yeah, some soil just next to the fire in case the wind does pick up, you can just sort of put it out.
It's actually not too bad. Wow. I was expecting a lot worse, eh? <laughs> That's actually not too bad. It's obviously not uh, no A-grade fish. It's no snapper or anything, but uh, well, you got nothing else it'll do. There's gonna be a few bones in there though. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Honestly, I was expecting a lot worse. Last night was a, a bit of a tough sleep, to be honest. There were so many mozzies around. I was just getting attacked for hours and hours. I eventually just had to take my flannel off and just cover it over my face. Because I had the hood down on the swag, but they were still getting through the gaps. So, yeah, I think uh, next time, or in future when I start using the swag, I'll definitely pair it up with a, like a box bug net to go over the top of it. And I think that'd be a yeah, good combo, but last night was pretty, uh, pretty tough. <laughs> But yeah, such a gorgeous morning this morning. Like honestly, it is picture perfect day. It is beautiful. All right, let's go find some water. So just down here in this little gully, that's where that little swampy lake is. So we'll go wander down there, collect some water. Might even find some bush tucker around here as well. Well, here we've got a five leaf native grapevine. Unfortunately, it's got no fruit on it. It's still uh, yeah, too early in the season for it, but there's uh, plenty of it around here. So we came back at the right time. This place would have a, yeah, a lot of grapes. I've just come across this patch of scotch thistle, which is an incredibly invasive weed in Australia. Now, I've never eaten them before, but apparently the stalks are edible and they taste like celery, so I'm pretty keen to give it a go. These ones over here all started to flower, and from what I've read, uh, you're meant to sort of eat them before they flower. So there are some down here that haven't started to flower yet, so I might uh, have a go at trying to harvest that. All right, now these are Super spiky, so I'm going to use my diving gloves just to protect my hands a bit. So from what I've seen and read, apparently you just uh, chop off the outer leaves. And this stuff grows everywhere in Australia. It's a horrible, horrible weed. It just absolutely takes over areas, so it's good to try and get rid of it if you can. I'll just cut it off at the base. There are spikes everywhere on this thing. Oh, these gloves don't do much to, to stop the spikes, eh? All right, now, I believe you're meant to peel the outer layer off. There we go, so, you can see, kind of looks like a stalk of celery. It's got a bit of a crunch to it. Quite juicy and watery like a celery. Yeah, right, not too bad. Well, there's breakfast. <laughs> so as I was saying yesterday, this is a spiny head of mat rush or the mandrelong foliar. And like I was doing last night, if you get the dried leaves around the base of the plant and then rough them up, it's a really good tinder. Also, like I showed you guys yesterday, if you Pull out one of the leaves from the inner part of the plant. It's got this white portion to the base and that's edible. It's actually quite nice, it just tastes like green peas. 
Also, this has started to go to flower. In another sort of month or two, this will go to seed. And the green seeds are edible and have like quite a nice nutty flavor to them. Then after, um, the green seeds will turn more yellow and harden. And from what I've read, you can process that down um, by grinding it up and turning into a flower, which you then create a damper out of. I've never done it before, um, but that's what I've read. And also, these leaves are super useful as well. Um, so indigenous folks would used to make uh, dilly bags out of this and cordage and eel traps and heaps of other things. So yeah, it's a pretty handy plant. Well, the fire's been taken care of. I covered it with uh, soil last night, so it's well and chilly out. So let's go catch ourselves some fish. Fire out. Have a go at this. What a stunning day. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, so just got a little crab on a Paternoska rig set up. So let's see how this goes. I can see some fish down there. They look like decent size. I think I'm getting a few bites. Oh, no. Nah. Well, they took everything but the, the leg with the hook on it. Smart fellas. Bloody hell, they keep taking my bait. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. oh, oh, that's a good one. That's almost edible size. Now that is a nice, big, juicy limpet. Surely that's going to catch something. Oh, yes. Yes, I think we got one. Ah, oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. We lost him. Well, that was tough. I've been fishing for about two hours and nothing, so. I think I'm gonna start making my way over to that beach over there. All right, we'll change the plans. I think I'm gonna jump in here just quickly and just have a look around the rocks here and just see if I can find any like abalone or sea urchins or maybe like a turban snail or something. This something small that I can have for lunch. Sorted. So, got a big sea urchin, got a really nice abalone, and then uh, two turban snails. So yeah, a bit of a seafood feast going on for lunch, which I'm very keen for. Starting a pretty damn hungry day. So, how about we make our way over towards the beach and we'll uh, get a fire going and cook these guys up. Oh, I've just chucked that bologna and the snails in this little mesh bag, but because the sea urchin won't fit in it, I think I'll just eat this here. All right, so just with the sea urchin, you just want to crack it in half. It is such an alien looking thing. Like that's its little teeth, I think. That is creepy. 
All right, now the stuff that we want to eat is this yellow stuff here. All right, so just went and cleaned out all the gut sack and stuff on the inside. And now all you're left with is all that yellow stuff, and that's what's edible. Well, it doesn't look like the most appetizing thing in the world, but let's give it a go. I've only had this once before. Man, it's just such a strong flavor. Kind of tastes like an oyster. It's got like a real creamy oyster flavor to it. And it's actually really nice, eh? With all that goodness. Yum. Man, it's so like flavors and it's so rich. gear and stuff in there, so we'll send that across while well, it floats, which is good. There you go. We did it. Here we've got one of my favorite bush tucker plants. It's called pig face, which is a terrible name for it, but it's bloody delicious, hey. So down here, you got these little fruits that grow on the end. Now they're green at the moment, but in another month or two, they'll ripen and turn a darker purple color. And then you can just, yeah, peel back the skin and eat that. And it tastes like a salty kiwi fruit. It's really delicious. And yeah, it's got, it gets these really beautiful purple flowers as well. So yeah, a really nice bush tucker, this one. Man, I don't think we could have picked a better weekend if we tried, eh? The conditions this weekend are just absolutely stunning. The colour of the water is just... It's like Fiji, hey? So we've even got more water dripping down here. There's quite a few drips coming off this rock shelf. And there's a few little puddles down there as well, so... Yeah, that's awesome. At least we won't have to worry about fresh water here, which is really good. Well, that's only been about three minutes and it's probably already got maybe 200 mils in there. That is so good. Wow, that was probably about 15 minutes worth and it's already full. Right, well, let's give her a taste. She's pretty dark, very tannin rich. Yeah, not too bad. Actually pretty good. I've definitely had a lot worse water before, so. Yeah, very nice. Just gonna slice the abalone into thin slices. So the turban snail uses this little shell as like a foot to close up its entrance, so you gotta cut that off. So that's a little shell, it's quite a decorative little shell. People make necklaces and stuff out of this. It's like real pearlescent on that side. Now the snail is right up in there, so it's got to try and get him out. There's his foot. That's a tricky one to get out. There are some, uh, I think it's the gonads up at the end. 
which are edible as well, um, which I want to try and get out, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to just using a knife. If you're at home, you just get a hammer, you just smash the shell, but out here with a knife, it's a little bit tricky. All right, because I don't have a pan, we'll try and cook it up in the nesting cup. I'd like to know what the uh, traditional Aboriginal technique to cook abalone is. Obviously, they didn't have like stainless steel pans. So I was even thinking, would you just cook it inside the shell, just slice it up, chuck it in the shell and then chuck the shell on the fire. So maybe I'll try that next time. All right, let's give it a go. Oh. That is delicious. Even without butter and garlic, it's still bloody good. I think this is a turban snail. Also very good. I feel like turban snails are underrated, eh? But you don't get as much meat as an abalone, but there's so many more turban snails out there than there are abalone. So if you like the abalone, then maybe try out some turban snails. Oh, that's delicious. I think it's about getting close to four o'clock now. And apart from a few little uh, bush tucker plants this morning, I haven't eaten anything since um, last night with the fish, so this is going down very well. So I've just got my cup over here collecting some more water. So this is that rock water. Man, it's delicious, hey. That's not filtered or boiled, that's just straight from the rock. It's real tasty. But um, what I think I'm going to do now, I don't think I'm going to go out for a dive. Like I said, I'm pretty tired and also just pretty burnt. So I kind of want to avoid the sun for a bit. So I might go try and find a spot for camp. And then after that, we might go for maybe a lionfish. Well, look at what we got here. A bloody balloon. Guys, if you're going to use balloons, do not let them go. I cannot tell you how many times I've found balloons in the bush in the most random of places. So please do not let these go into the sky. They just end up in the environment. So I just went and got the cut from the rock drip, but I used a different drip this time. And look how clear the water is. That is as good as it is coming out of a tap. Alright, I think we're going to roll the swag out here amongst this stand of casserinas. I think it should be a nice little camp for tonight. Right, so in here I've just got a prawn net. That worked out perfectly. Now let's just hope uh, the prawns come out. Far out. What a sunset. Well, no prawns yet. Oh, there we go. There's our first one. Oh, he's tiny though. I haven't seen any big ones yet, they're all pretty small. There's an eel just there. Yeah, there's his tail, there he is. Wow. Oh, there he is, look at him. Look at him go. Wow. Very cool. I can see heaps of small ones, but none of them big enough to eat. There we go. There we go, I've got one. <laughs> it's 
pretty small though. Come on, where's all the big guys? Well guys, I think this is going to be pretty uneventful. There's just not that many around and the ones that are seem to be pretty small. Yes, there's another one there but he's tiny. Alright guys, well I think I might pack it up, eh? Not having any luck with the prawns. How's the weather? Could not have asked for better weather this weekend, eh? It has been absolutely gorgeous out here on the coast. The shame about the prawning last night, I was really expecting to yeah, catch something, but just couldn't come across any yeah, decent sized prawns. Like lots of small ones, but nothing worth eating, which is uh, quite surprising because usually you get some really good prawns in here. But maybe because the lakes opened up to the sea, maybe a lot of the, the big dogs have run out to the sea. Um, yeah, not quite sure. I'll try and do a bit more pointing, um, yeah, over the next couple of months. Well, I'm definitely feeling like I've got less energy today. So in the morning, I'm already feeling pretty lethargic. We'll just come over to this rock face again. I'm just going to yeah, fill up my nesting cup with some water quickly. Right, while we're waiting for the water to collect, I thought I'd just uh, point out this little ground cover plant that's around here. This is called Coastal Pennywort, and I believe it's a pretty invasive weed in uh, Australia, especially New South Wales. I believe it originates in South America, I think from what I've read. And apparently the, the leaves and the stem are edible. I've never had it before, so this has been my first time trying it. Oh wow, it's actually got a quite a strong like celery uh, flavour to it, it's actually not too bad, it actually would go really well in salads I reckon, I think the stem's edible as well, oh wow, the stem's got a different flavour to the leaf, yeah, it's actually not too bad. Even though it's a pretty invasive weed, it's actually a, a pretty tasty one. Oh, she's filling up pretty quickly. Man, I can't get over how clean that water is. It looks so good. up here eh? I want to say a massive thanks to all you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoy this little challenge. It's been a really fun yeah, couple of days. Um, it's always good to get out here and sort of test your skills and I'm definitely keen to try and do a few more in the future. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy this one um, leave a comment below, like it, subscribe if you want to, you know all that YouTube stuff. So anyway I want to say a massive thanks again and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey,